welcome to Brewery Society Beers episode number 21 of Brutal Battle. Disclaimer on this one immediately, uh, if you hear something weird in the background, it's because someone is mowing their lawn, but it's an electric mower, so hopefully it's low enough and I'm able to clean up the audio enough that people don't hear it, so my apologies. Now, the first beer that I'm doing for this Brewery Society Beers is a, I believe it was a Hoarders exclusive from 2021, which was our first year in the Hoarders Society. We're now in our second year. Uh, I open this beer, I always open these beers beforehand, just because there's usually like wax or like a seal, something you kind of have to mess around with that I don't want to do on podcast. So I already opened it up. Unfortunately, it started gushing as soon as I opened it. So this might be infected, or it's just super overcarbonated. Uh, hopefully it's just overcarbonated and it still tastes good, but I'm gonna find out. So I already poured some in my glass as well because I needed to get some out of the bottle because it just kept gushing. Once I got some out of the bottle, we're good. It's not gushing anymore. So what beer is this, you may ask? It's in a 750 milliliter bottle. It is called My Zombie, and My is spelled M-A-I. So most likely it's a take on Mai Tai and maybe another cocktail involving the word zombie. I'm not big on cocktails. I don't really know them that well. I'm a beer and wine guy. So my zombie is a rum barrel aged ale with lime, grapefruit, almond, orange flower water, and spices. And it is 16.7% alcohol, which, you know, you expect the high ABVs from these guys. It's a very orange looking beer. Um, very clear though, too. It's not, there's no real like haziness to it or anything like particulate floating around, but now that I actually have it in the glass, there isn't a whole lot of carbonation hanging out. So we'll see what that turns into. Smelling it, mm. I get a little bit of like a flowery note. I'm getting the spices for sure. There's a bit of like an, a spicy earthiness, which maybe is kind of coming from the rum. I definitely get the lime. I'm getting a little bit of that almond as well. And I am getting a vibrant grapefruit. So the components of it are coming through. And what is it? Orange flower water? I don't really know what that would be. Maybe that's part of what's adding to that kind of like flowery note in there. Yeah, it's a, it's got a little, little bit of a perfuminess to it. But it's not crazy because... That lime, that grapefruit, that almond, and the, the rum spice aspect kind of tempers it a little bit, fortunately. Okay, that's basically all I smell. I'm going to go in for the taste. Oh, um, it's very easy. It's a little syrupy, which, you know, you may assume for a beer like this because it's very high ABV. Hmm. It's decently sweet. There's a lot of that kind of floweriness on the flavor. And there is grapefruit, but the grapefruit I'm tasting isn't tasting like actual, like the fruit of the grapefruit. It's actually tasting more like grapefruit rind to me because there is a bitterness that kind of comes along with it, which I like that flavor. Hmm. This is pretty good, actually. If it is infected, it's not being negatively affected or at least too negatively affected. I mean, obviously if it is a, it, it infected, I don't know what it would have tasted like without that in there. But if it is infected, uh, I'm not perceiving anything crazy bad. Uh, maybe just the flavors have, you know, stood up to it pretty well. Mm. There is a, there's a little aspect to it. And I assume it's that uh, orange flower water that is kind of like rose water ish. Because I am familiar with rose water. I've had it in things. Um, so it is coming off a little bit like that. I am tasting the rum barrel to it. There's a little bit of like a spirit note. And then like I said, I'm getting that kind of like spice character, like earthy spice character from the rum itself. Um, but this is pretty good. And I'm actually pretty surprised that I'm picking up on some of that almond. Because a lot of the times when there's almond in a beer, especially with all these other flavors going on, um, it can just really get lost. The other thing to note is I am also tasting the lime, but the lime is not crazy. That is a fruit that can have a tendency because of how acidic it is 
that it can just wreak havoc within a beer. So it's at a good level, in my opinion. So I'm, I mean, I'm digging this. I'm glad it didn't turn out to be a problem. All right, so let me read the back of this one. My Zombie begins with a tiki-inspired base beer as the foundation for the spirited nuances enkindled by the rum barrels it rested in for over a year. Interesting. Inspired by our favorite island drinks, we use lime and grapefruit zest. Okay, grapefruit zest. That's why it tastes like that. Orange flower water, almonds, allspice, and hints of cinnamon and ginger for a unique tiki beer experience. Exotic, tropical, and like nothing you've ever tasted before. Yeah, it is. Uh, and now that I read that, I am definitely tasting that ginger in there as well, and I'm liking how the ginger's coming through. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's a pretty good one. So let's go ahead and move on to beer number two, is I think it has to do with the spirit barrel that's used. So the sap portion of this one, I think, is based off a beer that they had some time ago called White Sap or something like that, and it was basically like a wheat wine style beer, I think just done in like oak barrels. So this one is Beer and Sap. It's a wheat wine style ale fermented with pears and aged in white port barrels. They also have another version of a beer and treatment beer that was done a few months ago when I'm recording this called Beer and Bond Punch. So maybe at some point I'll have that on and kind of do a comparison of remembering back to this one, see how this is tasting. But this Beer and Sap is 14.7% alcohol. It's in a 700, uh, sorry, 750 milliliter bottle. So yeah, let's pour it. Looks, I'm not pouring a lot for myself initially because it's high ABV. It's really orange. I mean, you could tell someone this is a lot of different things, like an amber ale, a, an imperial IPA, stuff to, of that nature. So swirling it up. Yep, you can tell it's higher ABV. It really kind of sticks to the sides of the glass, has legs coming down. Smell. Definitely getting the spirit barrel poking out. I get a nice woody character on there, and I get a sweetness presenting itself. I definitely get that kind of wheat wine type smell. It's definitely got the weediness in there. I'm getting the pear, but the combination of the pear with the way that it's kind of playing with the barrel character and the, the like alcohol heat is kind of coming off a little more apple-like, in my opinion. Oh, and this beer is from, let me see if I can decipher when it's from, um, okay. And this beer is actually about two years in the, in the bottle at this point, because this is a 2020, and I'm doing this in 2022. But yeah, there's just a decent amount of sweetness, that pear that's kind of coming off apple definitely getting the spirit barrel, there's a bit of like an alcohol heat in the nose. I don't really know what white port smells like. I've had port before, but I don't know what white port is. But, all right, uh, that's about all I'm getting on the nose. Oh, and that woodiness. So let me go in for a taste. It's pretty sweet. It's definitely pretty sweet. It's got, like, a bit of a honey character that's coming along with it. I am definitely tasting the uh, that woodiness kind of coming off as maybe, like, an oakish flavor. Getting the pear, it's kind of like lingering on my tongue after I take sips. There is a, there's a alcohol heat to it, but it's not crazy, so that's good. Hmm, definitely tastes like a wheat wine too. If you know what a wheat wine tastes like, it's got that kind of weediness with the nice sweetness to it. Um, I mean, it's pretty good. I, you know, I, I'm not wild about this beer, but it is good for being a wheat wine. You are definitely getting that pear aspect to it, even though I'm sure it's kind of fallen out a little bit over the years in the bottle. Um, and the wood is nice. It's adding a little bit from the barrel. Um, the spirit is not too much. That is a nice thing. You're sh certainly getting that warming in the back of your throat, but it's also, you know, it's not too much. You're not, it's not like astringent and overpowering thing. I'd say at this point I definitely enjoyed the My Zombie more, but this one is a decent beer. So let me go ahead and read the back of this one. 
It goes without saying, excuse me, it goes without saying that our brewers truly have a passion for alternative ingredients, fresh sources of fermentable sugars, and of course, unique barrels. Our insatiable curiosity inspired us to concoct this experimentation in fermentation, a co-fermentation of wheat wine, ale, and pear that was then aged in white port barrels. With no added adjuncts post-aging, this is purely wort, fruit, and wood. Okay. So I think that's their kind of like inspiration behind the whole beer treatment that they talk about is being wort, fruit, and wood, and that's it for the fermentation. So uh, interesting enough beer. Um, I'm excited now to just move on to beer number three. And this final beer of the episode, also in a 750 milliliter bottle, is called Absent Minded. It's a rye barrel aged sour ale with orange peel, lemon zest, and anise, and it is 7.4% alcohol. So basically half the ABV of the beer and sap. Um, interested to get into this one. I'm always very interested to see what the sour level is going to be for these brewery beers, because sometimes it's relatively in check. Sometimes it's very sour. All right, looks <laughs> it looks like the beer and sap, basically. It's very orange. Can't really see through it. Doesn't really have much of any head hanging out, which... Uh, you know, a few larger bubbles just chilling out there. All right, swirling it up. Ooh, wow. It really kicks out with that kind of like spice, earthy spice character that you get from rye. I get a decent amount of that. This, the anise is definitely there too, which if, if people aren't very familiar with anise, it's like a black licorice type smell. But thankfully, it's not crazy because I personally do not like liquor, like black licorice or flavoring or smells or anything like that. So it's just like a kiss in there. Ooh, it's got a fruitiness. I'm guessing that's coming from the orange peel. There's a decent bitterness that's kind of hanging out on there. Well, I guess the lemon zest can be playing into that too. It smells pretty bright, but got a lot of depth of flavor most likely. It's, you can smell the sourness to it, but it's not crazy. Like, you know when you take a sip, you're going to have some phlegm getting started in your mouth, but it won't be nuts. All right, going in. Ooh. Oh, I actually really enjoy what that anise is doing. It's like a just a kiss of it on the end of the, the taste. I get that, like, lemony sourness punch up front, probably mainly because it's the first sip and my palate needs to get acclimated to the sourness. Yeah, so it's like the lemon lemon peel and the orange zest with the sourness, base sourness of the beer presenting itself up front, and then the finish is just, like, this light anise flavor, which kind of cleanses the sourness a little bit before you take your next sip, which I enjoy. Hmm. This is an interesting one. I do like it. A decent amount of phlegm already starting to build up for me because the sourness is kind of like medium sourness in my opinion. Ooh. This is a, yeah, this is an interesting one for sure. I do enjoy this. I do enjoy this. This is cool. Uh, and you're definitely getting that rye character coming through as well from the rye barrel. It's like, like I said, in the nose, it's like that kind of earthy, spicy kick, which I think plays really well with the citrus, but then also plays really well with the anise flavors. All right, so let me read this. This Sazerac-inspired sour ale was aged in rye whiskey barrels with just the right amount of anise, dried orange peel, and lemon zest. Sweet herbal nuance on the nose gives way to notes of zesty citrus and rye spice, Raise a glass in recognition of cocktail pioneers and this jubilant sour ale. That's good. And this one is from, I believe, this year. Or no, I'm sorry. This is a 2021 release. So it's like a year in the bottle, basically. All right. So uh, unfortunately, I actually, you know, recorded this in two portions. So the My Zombie, I unfortunately got rid of that bottle accidentally already. So if you're a big fan of seeing the pictures to go with the episodes, I'm sorry, the My Zombie bottle will not be in the picture. Only the Beer and Sap and the Absent Minded will, unfortunately. So let me go ahead and tell you my ranking for this episode of, you know, least favorite to most. My number three for this one's going to be the Beer and Sap. Uh, wheat wine style ale fermented with pears and aged in white port barrels. 
it's interesting, but it's just not enough to get it further up the ranking, basically. Uh, my number two is going to be the Absent Minded. Uh, that's the Rye Barrel Aged Sour Ale with orange peel, lemon zest, and anise. And my number one is going to be the My Zombie, the Rum Barrel Aged Ale with lime, grapefruit, almond, orange flower water, and spices. That one had a ton going on. It was very interestingly executed. And as you kept drinking it and it warmed up, it just was very cocktail-esque and was very enjoyable. So that's my ranking for this episode. I'll just go ahead and do the rundown of the current top 10 for the overall for these Brewery Society Beers episodes. Nothing has changed, but this is just kind of a refresher on what's in the top 10. So number 10 is Chocolate Rain from 2015. It was aged four years in the bottle before being consumed. That's bourbon barrel aged imperial stout with cacao nibs and vanilla beans. Number nine is Chocolate Rain, spelled R-E-I-G-N. That is a double barrel imperial stout with cacao nibs and vanilla beans. Number eight is Sweet Magnolia's Black Tuesday. That's imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels with bananas, Madagascar vanilla beans, and vanilla wafers. Number seven is Cherry Chocolate Rain. That's imperial stout aged in rye whiskey barrels with cacao nibs, vanilla beans, and tart cherries. Number six is Samoa Black Tuesday, imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels with toasted coconut, cacao nibs, vanilla, maple syrup, and graham cracker. Number five is Island Time. That was a sweet stout with Hawaiian sea salt and lactose with marshmallows, toasted coconut, and natural vanilla flavor. Number four is Love at Midnight Black Tuesday. That's an imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels with pineapple, coconut, and vanilla beans. Number three, American Anthem, ale aged in bourbon barrels with peach, apricot, cinnamon, and vanilla. Number two is Pistachio Vanilla Black Tuesday, imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels with pistachio and vanilla beans. And number one, still there, Spicy Island Black Tuesday, imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels with pineapple and habanero peppers. So there you have it. That is it. Thank you, everyone, for checking this episode out. Um, Send us an email, BrutalBattlePodcast at gmail.com. We're on Instagram, BrutalBattlePodcast there. You can get back episodes through our website, BrutalBattle.com or archive.org, because that's where we host our files. You can just search Brutal Battle. Uh, We're also on iTunes, Stitcher, whatever the Google Play version is now. I know they changed it. Anchor and Spotify at this point. So rate us and review us through whatever podcatcher you listen to us and talk about us to people, you know, spread the word. We would appreciate that. And also we're on untapped. I'm Carlton Malibu, all one word. That's the easiest way to find me. And Rebecca is Ruby Reb 62, R U B Y R E B 62. Uh, That's the quickest way to find her. But thank you very much for listening to this episode until next time. Keep it brutal. I feel so-